Hey guys, Aaron here. Recently I was contacted by Dan from the RMIT race team. Now for those that don't know, RMIT is a university here in Melbourne and it stands for Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology. Now the race team are involved in Formula SAE racing where they use a little miniature Formula One car powered by a, I believe it's a KTM motorcycle engine, roughly about 650cc which is fuel injected. Now the team ran into a little problem where their machine went down and they can't get some of their suspension brackets made. So upon meeting Dan and I went down to the university and sat with them for a little while and uh, they showed me their designs and what we did, we created a project in my Fusion account and I got the guys onto Fusion 360 as well and added them to the team and they dropped up dropped or uploaded these files in here. Now once uploaded I showed the team how they could convert it to a Fusion design if it didn't do so straight away and then uh, showed them how to apply toolpaths in order to get their parts to come to fruition. Uh, now here's this, this is the second part that I did with them here today and I'll just pop into the design uh, window for a minute and you can actually see uh, how I've tackled this. Now what I did, because it was a SolidWorks part, it had no design history with it. So, as you know, in Fusion, you can come down here and uh, capture the design history, and down here in the timeline, you can see it here. So one of the first things I had to do was to convert their model into a component. And then what I did, I applied a rigid joint to the origin to get it in the right orientation. Now, this would help and speed up my workflow when doing the camming operations. Uh, the second thing I did was patch that hole because I knew I'd have to do some 3D surfacing work down in here and I knew that if I didn't patch those holes, uh, I knew that cutter would drop down in there and uh, cause me grief. And for those that uh, haven't seen uh, uh, the patch environment before, you can pop in here to surface and you can patch holes up you know, quite easily. For those that want to see a video on that, I suggest you go over to Kevin Ellingson's channel at mechanicaladvantage.com and uh, he'll show you a neat little video on how to do that and that's where I got this trick from. Uh, one of the other things I had to do to their model was apply some uh, chamfers on here and the reason I did that is because I uh, was speaking to Tim Paul when I was over in Portland at their Fusion at uh, 360 Academy and I was originally going to uh, deburr this using a 2D trace and Tim said, look, you're wasting your time using a 2D trace trace it's over uh, approximately 12 degrees uh, Tim actually suggested that I put a chamfer on it and uh, hit it with a scallop uh, tool path so I applied the chamfers but I decided to, uh, against the scallop tool path and I just went with a, th a 3D parallel uh, and it worked quite well no doubt you'll see that in a minute when I show you the machining operations um, so here we are here if you'd like to see how I attack this so there's actually three operations um, you know, op one, op two, op three. I actually set different work offsets for these. Help me down the track if I was going to machine some more of these parts once I knew where their position was in the vise. So if we have a look at op one here, I can actually show you the technique and we'll spin that right around here. So I attack the bottom side first, okay? And come in, dropped in with that shell mill and buzzed the hat off it and uh, spot drilled it and just did some... Uh, drilling down in here. Now you notice I'm not going all the way through the stock and I opted to control that in bottom height and just told it model bottom and drill tip through bottom. Uh, here I'm popping in with a 10mm end mill and just doing some 2D adaptive clearing. Now the step over here was about 20% oh, and I think step down was about 14 millimetres. Now, the reason I did it in two approaches was that I didn't have the, uh, the flute length to do it in one hit. I then dropped in with a 12mm end mill, so roughly half inch cutter, and popped around there and buzzed around that outside. I did a, a repeated the finishing pass, uh, what they commonly refer to as a spring pass, to clean that up. Then I just popped in with my spot drill and just did a 2D chamfer just to deburr that part. Okay, so uh, let's pop over to the machine and take a look at OP1 in process.
Alrighty, so let's have a look at OP2 here now, and I'll just come back to my home position, and I'll turn on my vice jaws. Now, originally when I did this toolpath, I did not simulate with vice jaws intact, and uh, I forget who told me this, I can't remember if it was uh, Al, Kevin, or Tim, but one of them said, Look, you must always simulate your 3D toolpath, and when I originally did this, I didn't have these vice jaws in situ, and... It was only when I was, did the 3D ball tracking in here that when it came over to do this angle here, I thought, oh, I think I'm going to hit the vise. Uh, I quickly ran over to the model, dropped these jaws in. These are exact rep uh, representations of my orange vise jaws. And sure enough, uh, the cutter would gouge into this. So I stopped it mid-cycle and swapped out these jaws for my aluminium ones. But look, let's have a look how I did this here. Now, I've left the, as you can see, my Z height is actually the bottom, so the height of those step in the jaws. And so these will all be positive movements. As you can see here, Z position is all positive. And buzz that hat off, and then I dropped in uh, with my 10 mil end mil again and just did a, a 3D adaptive to clean all that up. Then I used that same tool to uh, just do an open contour on the walls because it was quite there at 90 degrees and I knew I wouldn't get them uh, doing the ball tracking here. So this is a, a common 3D toolpath that I use a lot and it's a 3D parallel toolpath and uh, here it's actually milling along the Y axis okay? because my vice is situated uh, differently than normal. Uh, my vice is parallel to the X and not parallel to the Y because I couldn't fit it in, in the normal orientation. And Tim suggested I use a scallop. Uh, however, um, here I went with the uh, 3D parallel again. You can see I'm getting a, a little warning here as it's going to dive into the vice jaws. And uh, luckily I swapped them out because I would have actually gouged my orange vice jaws and they're a hardened jaw. So I just swapped them out for some aluminium ones that I made. All right. And if we speed it up here. And let's pop over the machine and have a look at this in action. <laughs>
let's uh, have a look how I drilled these holes. So I'm going to turn off the vice jaws and set my model up in that orientation. And here we have it here. And this is really simple. I just sat it on a parallel, uh, clamped it up in those aluminium vice jaws. Now, uh, Hurindi on Instagram pointed out, he goes, look, how did you hold that? Because you would have marked that part holding it. And he is correct in saying that. But however, uh, I, I can't see it being a problem. These are, these are brackets to hold uh, control arms. And a little little mark up here, and look, it's, you really can't see it. So I went ahead and did it anyway. I probably could have used some shim stock or something like that too. But yeah, having aluminium vice jaws was fine. And I just did a deep drilling operation here. Uh, even though all this internal meat was removed, I just knew... Uh, I, was, I was worried about this uh, maintaining the centre line. I knew it was being held up here by this top hole, so... I just wanted to make ensure that it was, uh, you know, straight, and correct, and hence why I did a deep drilling cycle instead of just plunging straight through there. I was worried the drill might walk. Alrighty, well let's uh, pop over to the machine and. Uh Okay, guys, what did you think of that? Um, uh, look, I'm really, really happy. I'm super stoked how these parts came out. Uh, I'm really hoping the RMIT University guys will be impressed and they'll appreciate these last two parts. Uh, usually they come over and uh, do the machining with me. Uh, unfortunately, they were snowed under with uh, you know major assignments and exams uh, this week, so I took it upon myself to machine it and surprise them, and no doubt they'll be pleasantly surprised. 